What is going on guys? Grave here. Yesterday Dice and EA gave us a complete list of all the changes we can expect to see in Battlefield 2042 when it releases here in the next few weeks. I will link all this information down in the description if you'd like to read over it for yourself. Some of the stuff I talked about in a previous video where some of the developers were on Reddit uh, and Twitter talking to the community when they were asking questions, but a lot of this stuff was not mentioned by those developers then. It kind of, I guess they were kind of waiting for the official notes to come out. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Uh, first of all, I talked about the number of tanks on the orbital map uh, being eight on PC, Xbox, Series S and X and PS5. So that's four tanks on each side, up from four tanks in total, which was two tanks on each side. They said that will stay the same on old gens. There will only be four, but on new gen, there will be eight on the orbital map. They did not mention any other maps tank count. I'm assuming that there will be at least eight or more on each map, considering a lot of the other maps are bigger. Orbital is a medium sized map, so I'm assuming the smaller maps will have less, the larger maps will at least have eight or more. I'm sure this will probably be adjusted when the game is released, kind of after they can see how each map plays with the you know tanks and vehicles we have available. Of course, they made changes to movement, adding strafe uh, input to sliding, adding the ability to vault on moving objects, and tone down the jump spamming. They added a grenade indicator, which is great because in the beta, of course, a grenade would blow you up. You had no clue that it was there. Entry and exit animations are now shorter and some were removed entirely. And they've also fixed elevators. So they feel less clunky in how the doors behave once you're entering an, or exiting an elevator. They kind of wanted to go on and talk about what they were looking at getting from the open beta. They said, first of all, they had their technical test in August to make sure that some of the things that they had applied before then were running correctly in the real world. They want to, uh, you know, kind of compare the behaviors of things internally. And so finally, the open beta on the scale that it was, was to provide the opportunity to hear directly from, you know, the community on how the game feels. I said a lot of this stuff had already been fixed before the beta. And I know a lot of uh, companies do, you know, older versions of their game for beta test. I'm not sure why they did this version, really. There was a lot of issues, a lot of things people didn't like. And I think they could have got a better reception if they would have had the version they're talking about right now, or at least a lot of these things they're talking about fixing uh, since the beta, or you know, things that were fixed before the beta even, would have been in the version we got to play. I think the community probably would have received the game a little bit better, because some people really enjoyed it. I didn't mind it. I, I thought the beta was fun. I, I think the game has potential now. We'll dice and EA get that potential out of it. We'll have to wait and see. But I know it was kind of a mixed bag. Some people really enjoyed the game. Some people uh, pre-ordered it. Some people canceled their pre-order because they didn't like it. So... It's just kind of a, a hit and miss situation right now, in my opinion. They said they wanted to uh, talk about performance as well. Uh, they said they hadn't talked about, you know, the experience with some older uh, versions of the game compared to what they're playing now, testing and polishing every day across their studios. It said in order to ensure that they uh, could have an open beta, they had to do some something called branching where they identify the most stable build they had available and that's what they put out for us to play and that build was from august it says they knew that the open beta build would therefore not showcase where they are today with polish and how the game plays not benefiting from all the additional work that has been done on the game since they branched it off in august now if you, like i said this stuff is linked down in the description they do show some video clips from the build now and it does look uh, does look a lot smoother um they said they knew there were bot heavy servers also across the first few hours for many players. Too many of you were being dropped into games that weren't being successfully backfilled, of course, and that left you fighting bots. They said their bots are designed as a good way for new players to learn how to play Battlefield and provide new options for veterans for the franchise to take newer players under the wing and show them how to you know, play the objective. Uh, bots are not designed as a replacement for other players. Uh, throughout the open beta, they were able to dedicate a great deal of time to looking into where the servers were sending certain groups of players and kind of bot populated matches uh, i also in my opinion I, I thought they probably used those bots to see how the servers were going to work I, I think they thought if they put an entire group of players on new gen and pc 64 on each side that it might really you know kind of put a strain on the server so i'm sure this was an easier way for them to kind of figure out exactly how the servers were going to work so they were also monitoring the behavior of matchmaking uh i'm not sure i'm guessing we're going to have a actual uh, systems like we've had in the past where you can choose your server I i'm assuming we're not gonna have to use that quick play option like we did in the beta at least i'm hoping not i've not seen a lot of info on that yet so if you guys have leave me a comment and let me know i really am hoping we can choose our own server like we have in the past that's going to make 
you know, finding games that are already full uh, a little easier. And, of course, finding games that are good for your connection. Uh, of course, you know, you won't be thrown in a match-made game that may be somewhere across the world from you or a long way away from you and that's full of bots. Uh, so they said big maps, as they referred to internally, was disabled. Some of you have spotted uh, in the key bindings that you cannot pull up the large map view. A lot of people wanted that. They said we have it in the build today. And, of course, they show an image of that where that has the big map overview. A lot of people like to have that big map overview when they're playing. Also, they went on to talk about uh, the full resolution uh, screenshots. You'll be able to pull this up at any time during live game play by pr pressing the view touchpad button on console or M on PC. This provides an immediate overview of where the battles are taking place. So that has been added in as well. Uh, they want to sure, uh, ensure that you're the best equipped with the right tools to communicate with your squad. As further example with this, we've modified the default behavior of the compass. Of course, you know, in the game, uh, in the beta, the compass only appeared when we ADS. And of course, that is down on the bottom of your screen. That will now be up all the time. They said they also knew that uh, in addition to their ping system they had available in the beta, the ping system was not working correctly. And that ping system now will work correctly. And that is kind of a, it was kind of a, downside to the beta because we don't have that old 3d spotting system that ping system they've added in since battlefield one was what was in the game and that was kind of hard to tell you know exactly to, or really hard to tell other players uh, friends whatever the case may be squad mates where something was going you pinged it they may not be able to see it they said they also fixed the heads up display also have worked on colors over enemies heads so you can you know tell who's an enemy and who's a friendly a little bit easier uh said they also uh, wanted to talk about the regular support style players. There were multiple scoring events related to trans, uh, transport, assist, spawn support, re resupply, health support uh, in the open beta. There, are, there are not. They were not in the beta, but they will be in the full game. We also reward strong team play in Battlefield. Over on the left side of the screen, the kill log is now more readable. They also performed a significant uh, performance pass on the colorblind settings. A special note uh, to close out the section on UI. I said, let's talk about the critical alert message, which appears at key moments. Of course, that was way too big in the beta. Most of you know when those critical alerts came up, they pretty much covered the entire screen. They have now reduced the size and lowered the frequency for the full uh, version of the game. Some other things they talked about was team and squad play. Of course, I talked a little bit about uh, how the ping system was not working correctly, and that has now been fixed. It also talked about your progression beyond levels. You'll gain access to more specialist hardware and the specialists that help to solve scenarios that you encounter. Loadouts are going to be fully customizable. In the open beta, they set up with four loadouts uh, that mirror the traditional classes for assault, medic, support, and recon. They will be at launch. Uh, they will be there at launch too, but for players to use as default. But as they unlock more things for their weapons, you will actually have that full customizable options like we've had in the past for your weapons. Diving deeper, a frustration we saw shared from the beta was feedback around uh, the experience with the plus menu and then you needed to reset your best setups on each of your weapons on each round. And that in the case of the AK-24, which did not work at all. They wanted to share the deeper kind of look at that. They said there will be an option to have, uh, you know, not to really move away from loadouts, but actually have the option to set up what you have on each weapon with that quick menu where you can change your attachments in game with the plus menu. So there will be things that you actually can select once you unlock them and put them in the plus menu. So different sites and different barrels and all that good stuff. You can actually set what's going to be there that you can see in game. But if you also need to change your loadout completely, you will have that option to do in game as well. So if something you put something on wrong, you forget to put something on, don't worry. You don't have to back out of the game. You actually can go to that complete loadout menu in game. Or you can just use that plus system and kind of use the things that you have already selected. They said the blocks closest to the middle of that, you know, kind of cross, uh, what looks like a, you know, pretty much like a crosshair, uh, that plus system itself, the plus. Uh, they said the items closest to the middle will be the items that your gun starts with automatically. So whatever you put on those slots, on those blocks, will be what your gun starts with when you start a round. And of course, you can change, like I said, any of those plus menu items uh, whenever you want. Of course, it only holds so many items. So if you unlock several sites for a gun, it looks like there's going to be a lot of customization weapon-wise. You're going to have to choose what you want in that plus menu. And then, of course, you can go into the loadout and change out anything you unlock during the game if you would like to try it out. Uh, last but not least, they said they're still celebrating some different things or wanting to celebrate different things at the end of the match. 
The end of the round will show, of course, kind of the strongest team or the best squad like it has in the past. It will also show some different things like the best player, you play with the most kills, most caps, uh, you know, maybe score per minute, that kind of thing. So the end round screen is going to be a little bit different. And also the uh, round start screen is going to be a bit different. This kind of reminds me of what they did with Call of Duty over the last few years where you actually see your squad or a group of players coming in on a plane, you know, in a Humvee, that kind of thing. They're going to do that with Battlefield. So when the round starts, it's going to kind of have an overview of the map. And then you're going to see a squad and a group of players that you're with, of course, coming into the map via helicopter, you know, plane, uh, IFV, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, vehicle that can transport players. Uh, they talked about a few more things, uh, kind of talking about lighting and some UI options. I said controller players, we want you to know we've already have improved mapping in our final option. So they will provide you with better overviews of the controls and the option to enable total controller mapping if you ever think you've got the default presets wrong so it looks like we're going to be able to change the controller however we want so you're not going to have to worry i talked about this in my kind of beta overview or you know beta thoughts i was really unhappy that you could not turn on uh, l1 and r1 to be your shoot shooting and aiming buttons on uh, ps5 but you actually had to go in and do it in your accessibilities on your console it seems like in the final version of the game what we're going to get on release that you're going to be able to completely customize our controller so a lot of those options we were seeing in the beta that we could not use you know they were kind of uh, you were unable to click on them or they were grayed out or they weren't even there they will actually be there in the full release and you can customize your controls how you want i know a lot of us right now i know scuffs coming out with some new controllers a lot of people like scuffs for the back paddles uh, me personally i was a huge fan of the back button on the ps4 i was hoping ps5 would put one of those out soon but when I don't have something like that, and I've gotten used to not using them now as of late, uh, I use like bumper jumper on other games where I can jump with the back triggers because I'm shooting with the top bumpers. So I would like the ability to change my controller uh, to where I don't have to go into my accessibilities on my PlayStation and do it. It's not that bad of an idea or that bad of an option to do that on console. But at the same time, it does make it kind of hard to navigate menus and things when you've changed those buttons up completely. So I'm glad to see that we have a customization option for controllers. Uh, you know, whether you're playing with a controller on PC or if you're playing on console with a controller. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Do you think these things uh, are, are good enough to get a lot of players back into the game? Do you think most players that did not like the beta are just not going to buy the game whatsoever? I have a feeling this is going to be a good battlefield for some reason. I don't know why. It may not. I may be completely wrong. But I also have the feeling this could be like Battlefield 4 where it comes out in that state where it's just not really that good for the first six months to a year. And then it becomes a better game as time goes on. And that's not exactly an ideal situation, but it's better than the game being just complete garbage altogether. Anyway, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliates here on the channel, Empire Jerky and Amazon Associates. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.